an elegant gingerbread layer cake with a lemon buttercream frosting and fresh raspberries. This is definitely a restaurant-worthy dessert. I start using two-thirds of a cup of vegetable oil. Quite often you see moist, tender cakes like a carrot cake use vegetable oil instead of butter. And add to that half a cup of packed dark brown sugar. And now to grab half a cup of granulated sugar. And how about some eggs? Three eggs. I'll add the half a cup of sugar and break my three eggs in. Right away, I'll start hitting it with that ginger flavor. I'm using fresh ginger once again, this time a lot of it, three tablespoons. And to keep this particular gingerbread cake light on the palate, I add a little lemon, two teaspoons of finely grated lemon zest. Go. I'll just give this a whisk to combine it. There we go. I'll set that aside for a moment while I sift the dry ingredients. All-purpose flour again, two cups. I will use some baking powder, two teaspoons. And now for those essential spices, we'll get three quarters of a teaspoon of cinnamon in there, a quarter teaspoon of clove, a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg, and lastly, a quarter teaspoon of allspice. A coffee mill can also double as a spice grinder. What I have here are beautiful whole allspice. So to grind spices, to really draw out the aromatics, you add them to your coffee grinder. The more spices you add, the better the grind you get. Now I'll measure quarter teaspoon of this and sift it through. Now I can add this entire sifted mixture to that oil and sugar base. And I'll just gently whisk it together. All right, now for the liquids. You add your liquids right at the very end of the process. I haven't added my molasses yet. I need half a cup of that. And in addition to the molasses, I need maple syrup. half a cup of that as well. So it's the balance of the milder sweet maple syrup and the molasses, in addition to the other sugars I've already added, that makes this cake a sweeter and more delicate cake. And now, a full cup of ginger beer. It's the carbonation in the ginger beer that helps contribute to this light, delicate texture in the gingerbread cake. And lastly, in terms of liquids, two tablespoons of lemon juice. And you can hear that ginger beer fizzing away. But wait until I add the last ingredient, a full teaspoon of baking soda. Instantly, it starts frothing and foaming, and it's gonna set all our other ingredients to work, lifting this cake up to its light, delicate texture. Add this, and whisk just until blended. This is a three-layer gingerbread cake. So I have three eight-inch cake pans. Each has been greased, dusted with flour, and a piece of parchment lined at the bottom. So now I'll pour this very, very fluid batter into each pan. I've preheated the oven to 350, and these take about 30 minutes. And I use the same skewer tester inserted in the center to check its doneness. When it comes out clean, I know they're ready. Give these a quick test. Yep, they are done. And here are the cooled cakes. This lemon frosting is a tart, tangy version of a buttercream. So I start with a quarter cup of unsalted butter that's been softened, and I have three cups of sifted icing sugar. So I'm just gonna add half of the icing sugar to start. And just beat that until it's smooth. There we go, and once that's softened, you can add your flavoring. So first, a couple of teaspoons of lemon zest. Two tablespoons of lemon juice. 
and as well two tablespoons of water. And now just a splash, half a teaspoon of vanilla extract. And I'll mix this before adding the rest of the icing sugar. Now that I add the remaining half of the icing sugar, it'll all come together. And then I increase the speed until it's nice and light and fluffy. There we go, fluffy and spreadable. So now it's time to assemble the cake. Flip it over, remember to peel off the parchment off the bottom of the cake. I don't frost the sides, but just the tops. So about a third of the icing, use your spatula to spread it right to the edges. And then to keep things light and pretty, fresh raspberries dotted around. And then a few in the middle. Now for the middle layer and just ever so gently press it in place. So now another third of the frosting and spread in the same manner. Another layer of raspberries. Now for the final top layer. So you can see it really is a grand dessert in its scale. Now since this is the top layer, take that little extra effort to create the swirls and swishes of the frosting, because this is what everybody's going to see when you bring it to the table. Now a final layer of raspberries to crown the cake. So I'll chill this down, give it at least an hour. I've got one already chilled so I can slice it up for you. As you can see, as the cake chills a little bit, it does settle into place, making it easy to slice. Oh, between the tart lemon icing, the fresh raspberries, and this light as air gingerbread, you really have something special for your next dinner party.